thanks to this new tool that comes with Unreal Engine 5, it has never been so easy to prototype levels and 3D scenes. By the end of this video, not only will you be able to design levels for testing gameplay mechanics, but this tool will also allow you to block out 3D environments for making beautiful 3D renderings. Hey everyone, my name is Evans and today I'm going to show you how to use the new CubeGrid tool of Unreal Engine 5 that allows us to prototype levels really, really fast. So for this tutorial, I'll be using this empty map in which I've set up a simple lighting scenario. And before going any further, I'm going to click in the viewport and press F10 so that I can see what is going on in the viewport with the larger view. So to activate the CubeGrid tool, you just have to go here, click on Select Mode and then Modeling and you'll find the cube grid tool here. Polymodel cube grid. You can click on it and we can start playing with it. When you activate the cube grid tool, you can see here on the left side of the screen, a new tab that appeared with a lot of options that I'm going to present to you later in this video. So in the viewport, you can also see that there's a grid that appeared and with a yellow square that follows my mouse. If I select a zone here, let's say a zone of five by five square and then press on the button pull, you can see that there's a geometry that were generated from this selection. So I can select this face, for example, and click here on pull, pull. I can generate geometry easily thanks to this new tool. If you want to do it faster, you have a keyboard shortcut, which is the E key. You can select a zone and press E on your keyboard and generate geometry easily. Of course, if you want, you can also remove geometry from the 3D model by selecting faces like here, for example, and press the push button or use the Q key on your keyboard to go even faster. So here I can select these faces and press Q multiple times to remove geometry. I can create a hole here. I can create a window here if I want. Another window there. I can remove this geometry. And as you can see, the tool is really straightforward for generating or deleting geometry on 3D models. So we saw that we can generate geometry from faces, but we can also generate geometry from points. So here, if I select this face and click on the corner mode button, you can see that there's uh, purple circles that appear at the corner of the selection. And if I select the two bottom circle, they become yellow. And if I press on the E key on my keyboard, you can see that I can generate a ramp. I can also press Q to go back, E to go farther. And if I'm satisfied with this, I can click done. Or here, for example, if I want a bigger ramp, I can click cancel and then select, for example, these faces, press Z on my keyboard, which, which is the shortcut for corner mode. And then I can select these two circles, press E. And if I change my mind, I can unselect, for example, this circle. And you can see that there will be a sort of peak from uh, this vertice, vertex. Here you can select this one, for example, if you want to create an interesting shape or this one to create another kind of interesting shape. So here, for example, I can unselect this and create my ramp. And if I want to validate, I can press done or press Z on my keyboard. This tool is also useful for creating rounded corner, for example. So here I can select this corner, press Q on my keyboard to remove geometry. Then I can select this face, press Z, select these two circles and press E and press Z to generate a rounded corner on my level. Earlier in this video, we saw that we can use the keyboard shortcuts to go faster, but we can go even faster by using the mouse. Let me show you how it works. You can select these faces, press Ctrl on your keyboard, click and move your mouse to generate or remove geometry. For example, I can select this place here. I can remove geometry there. I can create a hole here by selecting these faces, pressing Ctrl on my keyboard and pushing the geometry inside to create a kind of window. And this way you can see that we can generate geometry faster and in a more straightforward way. Just so you know, you can move the selection in space by pressing the slide back button to go forward and slide forward button to go backward. It's counterintuitive, I know, but you can use the keyboard shortcuts Shift E to go forward and Shift Q to go backward. So let's say here, for example, I would like to create a platform that is aligned to this one. You can select these faces, press Shift E to go forward, and then press E to generate my platform. So here I can press Shift E again, E, Shift E, E. And if I want to go far and flip my selection to generate the geometry in the other direction, I can press Shift E multiple times, 
And then here I can press the flip button or press T on my keyboard. This will flip the selection. And then when I'll generate geometry, you can see that I can generate geometry in the other direction. Another way to generate platforms is by using the middle mouse button to move your selection. So let's say, for example, here, I want to generate geometry. And then I would like to create a platform that is aligned to this one. I can click on the middle mouse button and move my selection in space here, for example. I can then press flip and then press E to generate my geometry. I can also, for example, let's say, create uh, stairs. Let's say I want to create a stairs here. I can move here, press E, move here, press E, move here, and press E. Another cool feature of the Cube Grid tool is that you can resize the grid to be more or less precise when modeling things. How does it work? First, you have to select here the block base size. You put a size of five, for example. And then here, if I model, if I generate a cube, I can generate a cube of size five. If I want to increase its size, I can use the block base size and increase its value or use the power of two parameter and put six, for example, increment by one. And then I'll be able to generate cubes that are four times bigger than the ones with the parameter equal to five. You can increase or decrease this value by one by pressing Ctrl and Q or Ctrl and E on your keyboard. And here, for example, if I take a power of two equal to five uh, to four, I will select here and create a cube that is four times smaller than the one with the parameter equal to five. What can I do with this? I can generate uh, interesting shapes. For example, let's say this one. I press Ctrl and E on my keyboard. Here I generate a big cube. Then I press Ctrl Q two times to have finer details. Then I press Ctrl Q one time, two times. Here I can generate, for example, this kind of shape. Press uh, Ctrl Q to have finer details and create small holes here. And you can see that you can go really small to add finer details. If you want, you can also move or rotate the grid based on your needs. So here, for example, if I create this shape, I can come here on grid frame origin and increase the value of X. And you can see that the grid is moving and is not aligned anymore to my shape. So let's say I want to press E. I can generate a cube here. Also, I can rotate the grid here, for example, grid frame orientation. Let's say I want to put a um, value of 30 for the Z axis here. I can select and create, uh, let's say here, for example, this kind of shape. I can then rotate again, press 60, for example, and then I can select this shape, press E, and you can create uh, nearly any shape you want. So if you want to go even faster with this method, you can go here and click on Show Gizmo. This will show you a gizmo here that you can grab and move around to put it wherever you want. So here, let's say I want to place it here. I want to rotate it this way, then I select these faces. I can create shapes that are interesting, OK? And if you want to remove the gizmo from the viewport, you can uncheck this here or press R on your keyboard. If you want to put the grid back to where it was at the beginning, you can click here and click here, and it will place the grid back at its origin. Once you're satisfied with your creation, here you can see that we've made a cool map for Counter-Strike, you can validate your creation by clicking on the Complete button down here. And this will create a static mesh actor that you can see here, Cube Grid Tool Output of type Static Mesh Actor, on which you can add a material. So here, for example, I select my Static Mesh Actor. Here on Details, I will select, let's say, um, a material that comes with the third-person third template. And here you can see that we have a cool map that was made easily and really fast. If you want to modify what you've done, you can select your static mesh actor and then click again on cube grid. And then here you can create holes, for example, and modify your map easily. So as you can see, thanks to the cube grid tool, we can create maps such as this one, which took me around five minutes to be created, which is really fast compared to Unreal Engine 4. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. If so, please don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe. This helps a lot. If you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 5, I suggest you this video that will appear on the right hand corner of the screen. That's it for me. Have a great day. Bye. Tool, 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 gameplay me mechanics. But this tool, 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 for an oil from of uh, blah, blah. instead of when you're satisfied with your level, he's here satisfied with what with what you've done. <laughs>